Here's a topic that set our collective community ablaze. Uh, Gerald Undone did a video about... Man, what was that video about? It was so loaded. Really, he was challenging the ethos of the camera review market or gear or... He, he said some things and uh, I implore you to watch that video. I'll link it in the description down below because I, I think it's a great video to watch as a as of a member of this community, as a as a photographer, as a creative, uh, as a content creator. I, I think we should all be paying attention to videos and conversations like this. Um, and I, I quite did like that video. I think it was a very tasteful take on, uh, I like the way he addressed the problems. I like the way he tried to stay as neutral as possible and neutral meaning if things made sense in favor of the company or the companies, then he called it out. If things made favor, uh, things made sense in favor of the creatives, he called it out. If things made sense in favor of you, uh, the viewer or the consumer, he also called it out. So. Uh, kudos to Gerald. I think it was a very well done video. I, I could tell that um, I could tell that he put a lot of thought into it. And and more interestingly enough, this channel isn't really that old, uh, but I've been on YouTube for more than 10 years at this point. Uh, I need to check that number it might be even longer. Um, we had a bigger channel called Lifestyles Defined. We did a lot of technology and lifestyle stuff over there. Um, and then I just spun the photography off and, and dropped it here. But listening to Gerald talk and the timing of which that video came out, I could tell that he had been sitting on a lot of these, a lot of these emotions for quite some time. And it's only if you've been, a, you've been an, involved in YouTube and the creative spare for quite some time that you understand what he's saying and you get where he's coming from like immediately and you could see it. Uh, things like how brands react to your review. And, and I don't think some people may not have noticed, but every video that Gerald does, it is a review. He'll say the brand did not get to see the video before it was released. The brand did not get to say what he can and can't change, right? And he's in this place of privilege where he's big enough to make those claims. But a lot of the smaller YouTubers are not. And that was us, right? And I know that place well is us is us because I'm still small. Um, but I know that place well where you get excited when a brand reaches out and like, hey, you want to try this new thing? You go, yeah, yeah, I'll send it over. Okay, this looks cool, right? And no matter how much homework you do before you get, like, are you wasting my time? Is this going to be a gimmick product, a shitty product? I don't want to do it because you made that commitment and now there has to be an exchange because you feel like right? Creators need to do better at being business people. You feel like because they shipped you the thing, now you have to commit to making this video. You know, there's still some checks and balances there. Hey, my findings in my review process aren't lining up with what you're saying. I don't think I want to make that video. Uh, I have fallen on that sword sometimes. Um, other times when you don't fall on that sword, what it looks like is essentially a marketing video. Right. So you, you reviewed a product and you kind of point out things that aren't the best, but you don't say that this is a problem or this isn't correct, or this isn't what it was supposed to be. And then at the end of the day, the brand is happy. You're happy. You're getting some views. You got the product review and on to the next one, but it's your, it's your audience. It's your community that you're doing a disservice and you're being disingenuous to. Uh, so Watching Gerald's content, I can tell that he has the, he has strong morals for that, and, and he stands on it. He stands on business, as the kids say. Uh, so yeah, always kudos to him for that. But there's some things here. That I think there's like three main points that I have jotted down here that I, I wanted to just paint the brush on. Um, number one is it's it's our job as consumers to to understand what we're looking for and what we want and what we need, right? So this conversation about how a particular content creator speaks about a camera and then the, the content creator to his left or her left or right says something 
contradictory and we're we're all like, whoa, who do we trust here? That in itself is it's a recipe for disaster that us as consumers should not be in. And and I say this to say this particular topic came about with the release of the Panasonic S9. And right away, we all should be able to sit down and make a list. And I spoke about this in my previous video and why I think the S9 personally just isn't for me. Um, and it's got many dope things about it. There's just these two things that's like, yeah, I think I'll pass. Uh, and it might be silly to you, but they're everything for me. And, and I think we as consumers need to have that list handy. We need to slow down. We need to stop buying into product obsolescence of every three or four years. Oh man, my camera doesn't take photos like it used to. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> How did you arrive at that? I still got a Canon T4i from when I started YouTube. You gotta do that math again. Um, and it still works. It still takes photos every now, every now and then I take it out with the 50 millimeter, the Canon Nif Nifty 50, the plastic, fantastic plastic. And I still get great images, right? And, and it's, we, we hear it all the time, but like the gas takes over. We need to get something new. And I get it because we're watching these creators and we're part of this community and on and on it goes. But we have some accountability as consumers um, where we have to sit back and say, no matter what this person says in this review, no matter how dope of a video and a story they put together, have you ever watched a Peter McKinnon video? This camera is still not for me. So I'm going to watch it and be entertained, but I can watch it and be entertained and appreciate the craftsmanship, appreciate the hard work from the company and a product of the product development team and all of that shit without being influenced. And I think so many of us are so easily influenced, right? I'm raising my hand because I am too. And then we get upset at the thing because the thing isn't living up to what we were told it was when we knew what we needed and we strayed away from that. So I, I first want to put that piece down that we have to have some accountability. Um, and once you own that accountability of understanding what you're looking for from your gear, from your equipment, you can't really be mad at somebody else or say, oh man, I just, they just put the banana in the tailpipe. Like, mm. You got to hold that fam. Where's your accountability? There was another piece of the conversation about, I, I like how Jared phrased it. He wasn't entirely mad at how the reviews arrived the way they did. And what he meant by that was cameras come out and these companies, they spend a lot of money to fly the creatives in and they put them in a sandbox, right? And they they set up specific shoots for them or in specific environments. They give them the lenses, they give them the camera. So they're building nothing but strength around their product, which is entirely their prerogative. I don't think you'll find a brand out there that does not do these things. And I quite agree with the way Jarek defended brands doing this because if we're all going to say that we are enthusiasts and, and we love this community you need to really build an understanding for the inner workings of this community and this is just how shit goes right like if you're a car guy you know the new 911 Carrera just came out, Carrera S, or they just announced it. There was only like two ass people that got access to it. One was the Car Wow dude. What, what is he doing reviewing a Porsche? Ah, that's right. He does drag races. And this thing's got some crazy hybrid setup that allows it to excel at drag racing, no matter how silly drag racing is, no matter how dumb it sounds that we're talking about the straight line numbers of a Porsche. A Porsche is a surgical instrument to be used around a track. It is not 
supposed to be racing American vehicles in a straight line from light to light. Whatever, but it can. So now you see them building the narrative. Hey, who's who? Who can we get to showcase that this thing can really move in a straight line, right? And Panasonic does it. I think Sony is kind of the king at it, to be honest, because uh, I I see a lot of my favorite creators. They get flown out to Sony events and like, damn, they hire top tier dancers and and they, they, they treat them to a great time. I think one of them was in Hawaii or some shit. Like it's, it's pretty dope to see Sony taking care of their community, which in turn, their community takes care of them. And then there's all of us that's like, we need to do Sony A7, whatever the fuck, cause it's got 4,000 megapixels. And if I couldn't take the picture before, this will definitely help me do it. Whatever, you can't be mad at this at the landscape of which we operate our passion in. Um, you got to give the camera company some slack because at the end of the day, there are a lot of passionate people that work at these companies. They're uh, like, have you ever, you, you should start looking for the engineers that work at these companies and listen to the interviews that they, whatever it is that you're complaining about your camera, trust me, they are aware of it. The issue is, there are other things that are worth or weighted more for them and the direction of their product than the thing that you're complaining on. Could they make it do better? Sure. But then they would have to sacrifice something else on the other side, or they just made a whole new line to say, it's, it's, it's okay. The, the point here is there's so many smart and passionate people that love this shit, just like you and I that work at these companies. And I, I, I think it's all right that they go hard, they go ham at marketing and trying to portray or portray, sorry, their product in the best light and get it in front of the most appropriate audience, right? Because let's be honest, that's something we don't want to, we, we think that all cameras should be all things to every person. Like it doesn't work that way. And then there's this the last piece that really stood out to me in that video was Jared went into tastefully, I would say he went into the conversation about how Panasonic has not been squeaky happy with the way he's reviewed their cameras in the past. Um, immediately when he said it, I knew what was going on because I'd watch his he's, he's quite critical of Panasonic, but he's critical in a way where. Uh, you have to be in that industry to really understand the the generosity of his critiques, right? It may come off as harsh, but it's it's kind of like, fam, what are you doing? If, if, if one is the least effort possible and 10 has knocked it out of the ballpark, you came this far. You, you got to a seven. You are clearly capable of getting to an eight or nine. What is this laziness? What is happening, given in context, the piece I just told you about, about engineers and how they view things, right? Um, but for whatever reason, Jarek and other creators have not favorably reviewed products and the companies just don't invite them back again. And, and I, I wanna zoom out on this because this is not something that only exists in our community. This is something that exists in, in technology and in, in cars, it, it's just, a lot of these marketing people that, that work at these companies are also following orders, right? Mm -hmm. And some of these higher ups that are making the decision are also some bitches, right? Like you can't say nothing bad. Like you knew this wasn't the greatest thing. You knew, let's put it this way. You knew the camera wasn't perfect. So why, when I say the camera isn't perfect, you're gonna cut me off. You're gonna delete my fucking email from your CRM system. Like, there's so many things here that's not cool. Uh, and I, I don't like when companies did. I think the first time I've, I've been made aware of this was, um, I'm a big technologist, if you may or may not know. One of my favorite podcasts is an OG podcast called This Week in Tech from Leah Laporte. Used to work at G4 TV or Tech TV from way back in the day. Um, and he always talks about he does not get invited to Apple's events anymore uh, because 
so I think Steve Jobs blacklisted him after he said some shit after the first iPhone, which he wasn't wrong. The first iPhone was not a great smartphone. It had no app store. It had it, did it, it had a browser, I think. Uh, there was a few things that was literally missing from the first iPhone. And Leo called it out. And Steve Jobs was like, yeah, well, go fuck yourself. And to this day, he still has not or does not get an invite to any of the Apple events. And... I say this to say he finds creative ways to review things. He finds uh, he finds the people who do have access to it and he gets them on the podcast and they have a conversation around it. Uh, but it's it's not strange behavior, but I also don't like it. Right. And and I'm, this is the, the, the good and bad of this corporate life and this 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 marketing world and, and, and big there's there's a lot of big money on the table and you see a lot of these nasty behaviors going on behind the scenes and again if you learn how to read between the lines you can see when it's happening so jared didn't have to release his video doing what he did for me to understand what was happening from the time i signed on and i saw petapixel had a video um tony northrup tony and and his wife uh did not have a video um, my boy Kai had a video. So there's this weirdness that's like, whoa, why is the, why is the community so split? Like, why is some of the people I trust there and others not? Now I need to look at the people that are there. Like, should I be trusting you? But also not fair. You got to sort of read between the lines. Right. Um, and then when you watch the very first videos of the Panasonic S9, you, you, you kind of see it you kind of see the grain of salt and where it should be applied, right? Like there wasn't much meat to these reviews. How could they be? They just got the camera like an hour ago, hit the street and make some content for us. And it better be good because we flew you out here and we fed you and there's drinks tonight. Don't fuck up, right? So like, but also these these people do this for a living. So I'm, I'm totally fine with the perspective that they can build with a piece of equipment in six hours that six hours is so potent and have so much experience behind it like i can also trust that uh, but there's jared didn't need to be there for me to raise an eyebrow mm, kind of get it because i have the context i know how critical he has been on their previous products and i know that they weren't the happiest with it right so learn to read between the lines. And then my last piece here is all of this is okay. The good, the bad, the left, the right, the ugly, the beautiful, it's okay, right? Like we all want to be a part of something. This is why you got the Canon guys telling me about color science. You've got the Fuji guys telling me about film simulation. You've got the Sony guys telling me about raw performance. And you've got the Nikon guys like, you guys must have forgot who. Like, we all want to be a part of something. And it is all right. And you have to, you have to be on guard. Look for the accountability where it's applicable. Um, Appreciate the craftsmanship of influencers and content creators because it should be appreciated. Appreciate the hard work of these camera manufacturers and the products that they create for us and, and the ones that listen to their community and, and how they arrive there, when they arrive there, appreciate it all. And then all the nuances in between. It's all a part of the community that we love. Let it rock, let it rock. Also kudos to Jarek for letting it rock, but also raising his hand to hopefully make it a little better. My name is Ramon. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here and you enjoyed the video, I would very much love if you could hit that thumbs up button. Uh, Go back, watch another one or two of my videos so you can learn my style and, and what I have to contribute to your time. Uh, And I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. Other than that, it was beautiful having this conversation with you. And I'm out of here. Peace.